the frigid cold like a mother's tongue scolding her rebellious child. The frozen forest outstretched further than healthy legs could ever possibly take you. Every breath an act of rebellion against a harsh world wanting to devour you. This is the land of Skyrim. I tell you, this is I tell where you a withering old man named August Virus calls home. At a young age, he fell into some trouble in his home of Cyrodiil and fled across the border of Skyrim. The change of scenery and company did not change his personality, so trouble was not far behind, and soon, before he could even contemplate, time caught up with him as well. The years flew by, and now he's grizzled and gray, sitting in a damp and drab prison. Off of the throne room the of Ulfric, Jarl of Windhelm, regretting the path he didn't choose and the one that he seemed to be stuck on. And this is the redemption of August the Outlaw. A life of bad judgment, reasoning, and choices all led August to this point locked away for what might be his final year's breathing. He doesn't want to expire with his name being either forgotten or be but a bitter aftertaste in the mouth of any that utter it. He wants to be a better person, but he can't be while tucked away in a dark cell. So oddly, to be better, he has to be worse, a prison break. Once the guards patrol took them close enough to August's cell, he took his feeble but still nimble hand and lifted the cell door key. He waited. He plotted. He would have loved a more subtle approach, but whether nerves, or the need for freedom, or the ravenous hunger, he ran. Arrows flew past him, the sound of steel swords being drawn echoed the chambers, but all wasn't as loud as August's heart pounding in his ears. With the adrenaline, he didn't even feel the giant axe making contact with his right arm. Wait, He's a true lord. He'll come around He emerged through a door and found himself face to face with Ulfric. He panicked and jumped on the table, scrambling for the door. The guards weren't going to let him go. They weren't going to let him just walk away. They hunted him like an animal, even when he finally breached the outer wall. What say you in your defense? He didn't have time to think. He took the only chance he had, and he jumped in the icy water. He was only in the water a few seconds, but he could feel the freeze in his bones. What he couldn't feel was his fingertips, but it was worth it. He got his freedom for now. He walked up the embankment and into the first house he saw to warm up, to catch his breath. Maybe snatch a few crumbs of food. He's not as sneaky as he once was. It's the little old woman awoke in a daze. He thought maybe she would go back to sleep, but no. He heard 
a sword be drawn. And he left. And she gave chase. The second house he ducked into seemed to be more pleasant. With dogs and a friendly face. And so he comes and works the field sometime. Took his time to rest. Goes down, it's just me and, and catch his breath again. To keep me warm. And plot his next move. To force them. Throughout his life, August has racked up quite the debt across Skyrim. 1,160 in Winterhold, 1,040 in the Pale, in Dawnstar, 2,040 in the Rift, in Riften, 761 in Falkry. 1,070 in White Run. 1,070 in White Run. And lastly, 3,070 in Solitude. And he aims to pay it all back. The only thing his mind clung to was escaping this frigid cold. So that was his first goal. Find somewhere to hold up more southbound. not as far south as he would have liked, but the air already felt warmer. And so this little house tucked away in these trees might be just what he was looking for. The place looked long abandoned. No food, no fire, only half-drunk bottles of mead and cobwebs, but it'll do for now. He ate what little he had and soothed his nerves with spirit before pushing on. It was a bright new day. The sun had risen and the warmth on his skin was a welcome change. He decided to get the lay of his surroundings, expand slowly outward like a flower urging to blossom. Opportunity was out there. He just needed to find it.
and the first opportunity he did find was scorching hot springs to warm his aching bones and strengthen his withering muscles and he took that opportunity. He met a few souls that found and took the same opportunity. Mm -hmm. Need something? Mm -hmm. Huh? Good morning. But exploring does have its costs. As he approached what he thought was a cottage, it turned out to be a storm cloak camp, who was just as eager to take the bounty on his head. And he had to run. So what was once a pleasant walk in the forest is now a run for his life. His arrows whizzed by his head. The running led him to old ruins. Before getting to poke around, a monstrous skeleton arose, weapon ready. August threw his axe, but couldn't bring himself to swing it against the monster. And he ran, yet again. But he didn't run long until he ran face first into a deadly wolf. He drew his axe again and swung ready to fight for his life. With nowhere to run, he takes the beast and slays it. August finds an old grave of some sort, the bleached skin of a draugr clenching a few gold pieces. As much as he didn't want to steal from the dead, he needed it more than them, to clear his name, or more likely, to just fill his belly. And then it rose, and he saw two mages approaching, with ungodly magic he had not seen before. He drew his axe, but he was severely outnumbered. He tried to fight but he does not know how to fight against magic. He ran. He sprinted away. A run for his life. Again. That's all this man can do right now, is run for his life. He made it back to what he's calling home now, to think, to think on what his next move could possibly be for this withered, frail old man in this harsh, harsh world. He's running low on food, and so he downs what meat he finds, just to satisfy his hunger the tiniest bit, just to keep him going a little bit longer. His hunger intensifies, but up the road, a scarier sight encroaches his view. An Imperial Legion troop, or so he thought, before he noticed the stripped dead there, bodies behind uh, them. Citizen, this area is off limits. You're interfering with Imperial business. 
Yeah, so you'll have to pay us a fine. Say, a hundred gold. Pay up, citizen. He wanted to pay to avoid trouble, but he already owes literal fortunes fine. to whole holds. If you can't pay with coin, you'll pay with your life. He had to run. He's been running for so long, but what choice does an old man have? He spots a long fallen tree across a great canyon with a bandit with a bow in the center. He runs across, ducking and jumping and weaving to dodge arrow fire. He tries his best to get away and he notices a dead bandit on the cliff's edge. And he thinks to himself, now's the time to get some armor, to get some gold maybe. He ducks into what he thought was an abandoned tomb to try on his new armor and to escape the pursuits of bandits in the bitter cold. But it wasn't abandoned. And he froze in fear for a few moments before approaching ah! this man. Oh, my guy, you startled me. There's a necromancer around here, so watch yourself. Can you help me? He's in the tomb doing God's know what with my dead relatives. Val's Varen. My family has never really seen eye to eye with him. And he has finally gone off the deep end. He's gone in to defile our family tomb by using our ancestors for his filthy dark elf necromancy. My aunt went in after him, but she hasn't come out yet. And I don't think I can take him by myself. <sighs> I'm not proud of it. I'm terrified of that place, and Aunt Agna knows it. My dad locked me in there in a drunken rage when he left us. Three days in there eating the offerings left for our dead before Aunt Agna found me. Can you help me? He's in the tomb doing God's know what with my dead relatives. Great. I'll unlock the door and meet you inside. Then you can lead the way. Now was his time to turn his filthy name into one of bravery, at least for one person, to selflessly help a poor soul. But if he were to find a few pieces of gold to go Get towards his bounty, and maybe something to eat, here. that would be nice too. He drew his sword and was ready to see what awaited him in this tomb. And here's the first sign, Draugr's. He was scared out of his mind, but he tried his best and he prevailed, slaying the Draugr. With the help of his new friend. If he would have told August he would have been eating apples in an old tomb yesterday, he would have laughed. And then he finds a nice shield in a chest. Hey, those belong to my family. Unbeknownst to him, he was technically stealing. He felt bad about that. But they pushed on. No, and Agna. Why didn't I go in with her? He's barred the door. Gods only know how he's defiling the bodies of my ancestors in there. Agna once told me there is a secret room deeper in, where they bury disgraced members of the family. Maybe that will get us into the main chamber. From apples to moldy cheese to cloves of garlic, the hunger must be satisfied if he's to push on. 
The horde of robbers seemed endless, relentless. August and Goldmere kept chopping away at the numbers with their heavy swords. August, afraid as he acted, hung in the back, still fighting the urge to run. But he didn't. He fought. Fighting Draugr is hazardous in many ways. One way was disease, and how August was infected with the brown rod. Talk the other way around. I'll return my ancestors to Sovngarde, and you with them. Sovngarde is a myth, you swit. Now you can join your ancestors in service to me. To make one fight their long deceased blood kin is a nightmare no man should dream. But that was Goldeer's reality, and August intended to be the force to shake him awake. He used every tool at his disposal, but the drawer kept pushing him further back in the team. Slash after slash, he grew more weary and tired, and scared for his life. He tried to be brave, but he didn't want to die here. Not like this, not now. And so he ran. Until he passed the barred door, Hearing Goldir continue to fight gave him the surge of energy he needed. He made a promise to keep. And he was going to keep it. Finally cornered the nasty necromancer, swinging their swords at full strength to break his magical defenses. Until finally, he fell. Thank you for your help with bombs. Please take this and leave me to see to Andagna and my other family members. And as quick as it begun, it was over. August held up his end of the bargain and kept his promise. And even on the way out, he returned the stolen shield. The accidentally stolen shield. Still hungry and still tired, August thought what his next move could be. He wants to make it towards a small town he heard of called Iverstead, but he needs to cross the fallen tree bridge yet again into old enemies and old danger. And he fought the bandit on the tree, mere inches away from falling to his death, but he succeeds. But he contemplated. This was the first human he's ever killed. And it didn't set right with him.
An Iverstead appeared over the horizon. He thought the small town was away from the hold's influences, but he was wrong. You have committed crimes against Skyrim and her people. What say you in your defense? August finds an old campsite just outside of town. From the looks of it to be overrun, maybe attacked by bandits or bears. The fire set smoldering but burning no longer. He scavenged what he could, but it didn't help much. He did manage to get some sleep though. The next morning was as beautiful as it was bleak, just as August thought he was out of options. He counted what gold he's collected. He had just enough to pay off his bounty in Falkyrie. If he went there, he could mark that off his list and also have a warm place to sleep and maybe get some food. A decent foothold in Skyrim to further adventure out and make more gold. That's where he's got to head. Maybe there's a mountain pass he can take, instead of going around all of the mountains he's already crossed. August was so hungry that when he saw the dead deer on the side of the road, he immediately thought, if it came to it, he would have to eat it. And he ventured up this old mountain pass, and the cold slowly started sleep seeping back in. It was not a feeling he missed. He decided to escape the cold in an old cave, where he encountered a bandit. He could handle some bandits, he thought. No problem at all. Maybe even find some food. Or another bedroll. But as he peered around the corner, he saw what he had never seen before, but he's heard of a vampire. He was so scared, he just turned and ran. He didn't think twice. I'm going to enjoy this. Outside, he examined his wounds and noticed he felt funny. And he realized he may have picked up the vampirism disease. He did not know at all how to cure it or what to do next. He just had to keep walking. What was that? He just had to keep moving. Before long, he made it to Helgen, the smoldering mess of Helgen that was left after the dragon attack, but soon after he made it to Falkyrie.
After a long journey, he finally arrived at Falkyries, exhausted and starving. Wait, I know you. The only mistake was you showing your face. You've committed crimes against Skyrim and her people, and it's time to face the Jarl's justice. Good enough. I'll just confiscate any stolen goods you're carrying. Then you're he paid off his bounty, and for the first mm -hmm. time in a long time, he was a free man in one place. The weight lifted off his shoulders. The first time in a long time. He went around to the shops and sold what he did have. Sure and the next thing he and needed was to rent a room and finally fill his Welcome belly. Dead man's dream. Sure thing. It's yours for a day. Let's sate that appetite. I'll show you to your room. Right this way. <clears throat> Let me know if there's anything else you need. We should hire Tekla on here. If she could just spend alive, less time serving you? Dengue. He awoke well rested, finally regaining some of his vigor, but sadly it's not all peaches. His brown rod has grown severe and his vampirism, although hasn't progressed, is still very worrying. He set for a spell in the inn, thinking what his next move is, taking in the stillness of this moment. Happy created ink. <laughs>